Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials. All the info, none of the fluff, so let's get to it. Since yesterday, I've been doing a bunch of MIDI editing related tutorials. I've done a few more in the past, so I'll link a few of them up there as well that are more kind of like one-off tips. But now let's just focus on MIDI for a few episodes. Today, I want to show you a bunch of hotkeys that I find really useful when MIDI editing. And a lot of these aren't set to anything by default. So taking a little bit of time to customize these settings will really kind of speed up your workflow in the long run. I have my key down here so you can see all the hotkeys I use. And in the end of the video, I would also put a list of all the hotkeys that I've used in the video as well. So because of how many commands and actions there are, today I'm just gonna talk about the one key hotkeys that I use very often. Anyway, let's get to it. This is my MIDI editing screen set. So the first hotkey is if I set a time selection and I come here, if I press tilde, it'll expand to this time selection. And from here, let me show you some stuff that you can do. On your numpad, you can move the note around. So I can press A to go up by semitone, press two to go down by semitone, and then I can press six and four to go right and left by grid value. I also have some custom actions here. If I press five, it'll go up by a fifth. And if I press option and five, it'll go down by a fifth. And those are really simple custom actions that basically all they do is I have the move notes up one semitone chained together seven times. Then if I do option and eight and two, it'll move up by an octave. And then if I go option and shift and eight and two, it'll duplicate notes up and down an octave. We just wrote a chord. I can do command and D to duplicate the chord to the next measure. And then from here, I can transpose some of these notes. So maybe take this E up to F, this G up to A, let's keep this here. Then I can duplicate this, move this up and now I have a D and then I can just alt and drag this and now I have a G. So I have a simple chord progression. Now to navigate between the notes, I have my D, W, S, and A set to move between notes. So W and S move up and down between notes, and then A and D move left and right. So this is kind of like if you've ever played any video game like Counter-Strike or something, this will definitely make a lot of sense to you. So I can quickly also play with the voicings of these, maybe take these two voices and take them up an octave, maybe take this and move it up an octave. Another thing I can do is I press J, and pressing J will join adjacent notes. Next is if I want to edit the velocity of note or a few notes, I can press G and that will bring down their velocity by 20. I I can press Y and that'll bring up their velocity by 10. And then U and I, I have set to kind of micro increase and micro decrease. So U just brings up the velocity by one and I brings it down by one. So again, with one key, I can make some of these notes louder or quieter. I can select all of them and I can humanize them by pressing H. Here it opens a menu. These are kind of my most default settings. I just play with the timing under 10%, velocity about 30%, and the timing bias changes based on what I'm trying to do. I usually feel like drummers are early, keyboard players are a little late. So let's just do this. And now as you can see, See, the notes don't all occur in the exact same time, which is more close to how a human would play it, and their velocities are not exactly the same. If I want to quantize these, so you have this in your toolbar right here, which is quantize, and the default is to Q. But if you press Q, you'll get this menu, which a lot of people are annoyed by, and that's why I have a bunch of things that I do with Q. If I press Q, it will just quantize notes position to grid, and it won't open any kind of menu. If I want to open the menu, I press Command and Q for more precise measures, and then I have Option and Q to quantize notes using the last quantize setting. So in case I quantize something kind of to a very specific settings like this, then if I hit OK, if I want to do the same to others, I just press Option and Q and then it'll use the same settings as before. Then I have two ways of splitting notes. The first way is I can put my edit cursor here, select like all these notes and I can press X and they'll be split by the edit cursor. But also if I want to split notes at my mouse cursor, I can just press B. That won't work for a multiple notes, but it will work for one note. Then I have my C to open open up the mod wheel lane and then I can add mod wheel values to these. I have my V to bring up the velocity lane. I have my R to toggle looping. So that's pretty useful, especially if you don't have your timeline visible. Finally, I have some stuff that helps me change the grid size. So for grid sizes, what I have is I have command control and mouse wheel that goes between these values so you can see them changing. And then I have my P toggling triplet between triplet and straight and my O goes to swing. Unfortunately, this is not a toggle. However, I can hold all four modifiers and then I can use my mouse wheel. And if I bring my swing value to zero, it'll essentially be no swing. Or alternatively, I can press P twice and it'll first go to triplet, then it'll go to straight. I can very quickly change my grid size with my mouse wheel. I can press O to go to swing and then I can hold all four modifiers 
and adjust my swing value. And then the most common grid sizes that I have, I have set their own hotkeys to them. So if I press eight, I go to, and that's not numpad eight, that's just QWERTY eight. I'll go to eighth. If I press six, I'll go to 16th. If I press three, I'll go to quarter notes triplet. And right now I have a swing going. So if I just press P, I'm at normal triplet. Those are kind of like, for me, the most used ones. You can set more of these to more numbers. By default, numbers one to nine don't have an effect in the MIDI editor. So by all means, use them like that. Um, just kind of have like, you know, numbers one to zero, all representing one grid size that you use. That's pretty useful to do. Plus and minus to shift grid size by half, which is not a big deal normally. But if I set my grid to something like one five, when I'm writing quintuplets, then it's really useful to go kind of up and down by those values to go to 110, go to 120 and stuff like that. So that's when I use those. Otherwise, I can just use my mouse wheel to scroll between them. Finally, I have my comma and period to go back and forward by a measure. So those are some of my one key hotkeys and some extra stuff kind of peppered in. Feel free to take a snapshot of this. You can copy my hotkeys or you can use your own hotkeys, but my hotkeys follow some kind of logic where similar operations are done by adjacent keys and, you know, up and down usually are with two keys above and below one another. Left and right is with two keys to the left and right of each other. My WASD that's kind of more inspired by video game keyboards and then the numpad key where I do a bunch of other operations. Something I encourage you to do is go to your actions list up here in section, go to MIDI editor and then just sort by shortcut and you'll see all the shortcuts that Reaper has by default. Now Reaper has a lot fewer than this in the defaults, but also have a read through all these commands that you can use in the MIDI editor. In the next video, I'll show you some mouse modifiers that I find really useful. Then I'm going to actually show you what's going on around this window because there's tons of stuff that you can do from the MIDI editor just around these windows that are really useful. At the end of this series, I will put all my MIDI settings in a blog post so you can just download all of them at the same time if you want to. If you can't wait for them, just shoot me an email and I'll send it to you, you know, whatever, whenever I see your email. I promise you that there's so much potential to Ripper MIDI editing. You can really make it work how exactly you work. And I think that is really valuable. Also check out other tutorials by other people. John Tidy has a really good one about chord guns. So check that out. And I'll check in on you Thursday. Bye-bye.